All right, so proofs is, uh, or the study of proofs is the core of the study of geometry. So we've been studying chains of reasonings and if-then statements. Uh, we said if mushrooms taste mild, then eggplant is excellent. If eggplant is excellent, then yada, 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 right? We had all these crazy examples of chains of reasoning. So today, though, we're going to write chains of reasoning in a slightly different format. And instead of it being based on silly statements, we're going to use the laws of geometry. So the first thing we need to do are review some of these rules. Uh, rule number one that we're learning today is that any two points determine a line. Any two points. So even if I have a diagram like this, and I have point A and point B that don't look to be collinear because there isn't currently a line being drawn between those points. Because we're only comparing two lines, I'm sorry, two points, and we could draw a line through any two points, we could consider those points to determine a line. The second theorem we're going to learn today is this one. If two angles are right angles, then they are congruent. Does that make sense? Maybe. Seems reasonable, right? Yeah. Could you, uh, could somebody raise their hand and tell me what the converse of that statement is? Uh, go ahead, Eli. If, if two angles are congruent, then they're both right angles. That's the converse. Now, in this case, is the converse true? No. No, the converse isn't true because we could have two angles that are 45 degrees. They're both congruent, but they would not be right. All right. So then we're going to take this new fact. We're going to look at our given situation in this proof, and we're going to see if we can get from the givens and end up at angle A is congruent to angle B. So, how do we start a proof? Step one, you're going to write down these <coughs> steps, please. I want you to label your diagram with given information. So we know that angle A is a right angle, angle B is a right angle. Who can tell me the, uh, how we mark a diagram with a right angle? Uh, Jazzy? The little square. Yeah, the little box in the corner. Good. So tick marking your diagram is essential. So on your paper, when you start your homework, you write down the problem, draw the diagrams, and then you tick mark the diagram. You label it. Okay? Now the second thing you're going to do is you're going to write the givens in the statements. You have to go from something, okay? We can't assume everything. So I would write number one under statements, and I'm just going to write out the given information. You do have permission to do some slight abbreviations. For example, I can do angle A is a right angle like that. I used RT for right and I used a little thing that looks like an angle instead of writing out the word angle. Any abbreviation that you see me do is okay for you to do. If you haven't seen me do it, then maybe don't do it. Uh, yes, Abby? Can you do it as inside like right angle? Can you do like a menu little right angle with a box or anything? Um, I want you to actually say the word out, oh. okay? Let's go ahead and um, write out the second given. It's number two. Uh, you could make two different ones, but I'm actually going to have one step or one number with both givens. Oh, so, so I'm still on step one. Right. Now, it's, it is an okay approach if you want to list the givens on separate steps, but I tend to just put all the givens on one. Now, why is it that I know that angle A is a right angle and that angle B is a right angle? Andrew? Because it's given. It's given. They told us, so that's what you write, given. Everybody should always be able to get past or get at least two step one in their proof. The, the way you show me an attempt on a proof is you write down the diagram, you write down the problem, and you at least state the givens. Uh, Eli? What if there's something that's not given, how would you prove it? Uh, well, we're going to get to that in the next example. Okay? So it either has to be given or it has to be able to be assumed from the diagram. Uh, we're not going to make any diagram assumptions in this one because we just don't need to. So we know they're both right angles. Is there some sort of law or theorem that will help us get to what we're trying to prove? We might have just discussed it, and there might be a star by it. Marissa? If two angles are right angles, then they are congruent? 
Exactly. Well, we know they're both right angles, so we can say then, in number two, that they're congruent. Angle A, congruent. Angle B, and our reason why, is exactly what Marissa just said. If two angles are right angles, then they are congruent. And it's about this time where you're thinking, well, duh, why do we have to write all that down? Well, we have to crawl before we can walk. Right now, our proofs are going to be anywhere between two and four steps. Um, when we get a little further along, your proofs are going to be up to 15 steps. And uh, by that time, you'll be ready for them, so it won't, it won't seem like such a big deal. But right now, we're doing what I like to call, well, duh, duh proofs. Uh, so you can't say duh. You have to say uh, the reason why. And it might be something you, where you think, well, that's obvious. But right now, we're just working on fulfilling uh, the, or using a chain of reasoning. Let me point something out. Notice that information that I said here, where I mentioned right angle, is mentioned in the hypothesis of my reason. And then notice that information I said in step two, about something about congruent, is mentioned in my conclusion. So, in my entire step two, I have conclusion in the statement and conclusion, and I'm sorry, that con congruent in the statement and congruent in that statement, in the reason's conclusion. So information in this statement must be in its conclusion here. That's going to be true for all proofs. If you mention something here in the statement, that same subject must be in the conclusion of its reasoning. And information in that hypothesis has to have been mentioned somewhere else in the proof already. You can't say if something that you haven't stated in the, in the, in the statements. We are finished because we've proved that A is equal to B. Done. <laughs> Andrew, do you have a question? Me? Yes, do you have a question or are you good? I'm, I'm good. Good. All right, turn the page, please. Let's now, uh, eventually we should do number one, but we're going to do number two first. So Eli asked us before, well, what do we do if there's nothing given? Well, here is something like that, where it, first it appears that there is nothing given. Well, they've given us the diagram. So what we're going to write, because we can't really tick mark our diagram, we have nothing here, we can say, Number one, diagram as shown. I don't have a lot of room, so I just kind of squish it in there. And it's given. No, we're not finished. I'll, show, I'll tell you when. <laughs> now flip back to page, I don't know what page it was. It was uh, this page. Ah, this one right here. Where we talked about, well, you can just look at what I have up there. Where we talked about what you can and cannot assume from diagrams. So in this proof, all we have is the diagrams, right? So we need to know what we can and cannot assume. We can assume straight lines and angles. We can assume collinearity between this. All right, keep that in, in mind. Go back to notes. Um, it does. It always does. Yes? Is the first one usually always going to be... So the first thing you do is write givens, yes. This is our, our second theorem of the day. It's back on page 19. I didn't show that to you before. Or is that the right, am I saying the right page? It's page 21. Sorry, my numbers here are wrong. Uh, if two angles are straight angles, then they're congruent. So now we have two laws that we're working with. Two angles are right angles, they're congruent. If two angles are straight angles, they're congruent. Back to our proof. We're given the diagram. What can we assume from this diagram? Uh, Eli, give me one thing we can assume. Angle RTV and angle STU are congruent because straight line. You said two different facts. Can we assume congruency from, from a diagram? Yes. No, you can't assume congruency, but you said something else that we can assume. We can assume straight angle. So we have to do it step by step. So what you say in your next one is that angle RTV is a straight, and I ran out of room, angle. 
So it's, it looks like a line. We can assume a straight line. Angle RTV is a straight angle. What's the other straight angle? Matt, what do you think? STU. Good. So let's write that in step three. Angle STU is a straight angle. How did we get that information, you guys? The diagram. Alex. The diagram. We assumed it from the diagram, so that's what you're going to write. Assumed from diagram. Now you can only do that with things that were on that list. Now for reason three, I'm just going to write same as two. You can also do the little hash marks if, I, you're, if you've written it directly underneath. Okay, now we've shown that both angles are right angle. I'm sorry, straight angles. So what can we uh, imply next? If they're both straight angles, then they are both, then they are congruent, congruent right? All right, so now we're done. You can say angle RTV congruent to angle STU. The Y was the theorem we just learned. If two angles our straight angles, and you write it out in if-then form every time, then they are congruent. Any type of, like I said before, any type of abbreviation that you see me doing is okay for you to do. All right, let's do one more together today. Go ahead and turn the page when you get a chance to page 24. And start off by labeling uh, the diagram. We know that angle 1 is 60, and that angle 2 is 30, and that angle T is a right angle. So I'm going to make that little box there. Go ahead and write the givens. And I'm going to put it all in one step. If you don't have to, you could make them separate, but I tend to just do it all in one. And what's going to be my reason here? Given. Should always be able to get that first one. Now we're trying to, s to prove eventually that they're congruent. Uh, Jazzy, do you have a plan in mind? Yeah. Okay. You just add um, angles one and two together and get 90. You get 90. All right. So if I added angle 1 and 2 and got 90, what, what, what angle would that form? What, what would it's a right angle. So right angles, so mm -hmm. It's a right angle, but what would its name be? Like this is angle T, right? This is angle T, oh, and it's 90. F. Can we just call it angle F? AFE. Yeah, we have to call it, listen please, we have to call it angle AFE because there's more than one angle that has F as its vertex. So just like Jazzy said, right, the measure of angle... AFE is equal to 90. And how did she get 90 degrees? What did she do? She yeah. added. So here's an example where you just, you don't have to write it in if-then form. You just write addition. <laughs> now what type of angle is AFE if it has a measure of 90? Right angle. It's a right angle. So we have to say every little thing. We could say angle AFE is a right angle, and who can tell me our, our reason for why we know it's a right angle in if-then form? Abby? Because it equals 90 degrees. Because it equals 90 <laughs> degrees <laughs> is, <laughs> is right, <laughs> but <laughs> let's get it in if-then form. If angle, if M angle, no. Wait. If an angle has if a... If an angle measures 90 degrees, then it is a right angle. Perfect. Yeah. If an angle <laughs> has a measure, you're writing please, of 90 degrees, then it is a right angle. Notice the statement 3 mentioned right angle and the conclusion of the reason mentioned right angle. We're keeping that pattern. Well, we know T is a right angle, and we know AFE is a right angle. Do we have enough information now to prove what we're trying to prove? Yeah. 
Yes. yes. Mm -hmm. Because we have the theorem that if two angles are right angles, then they're congruent. So we can write that they're congruent. Angle AFE, congruent. Angle T, and I just said it, but who could say it again? The reason why? Alex? Uh, If two angles are how ninety degrees? Well, let's look look up at the, let's look at the notes. That one. If two angles are right angles. Yes. Angles. Two angles are right angles. Then they are congruent. And you guys, the wording matters. Okay. Nice job.